Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive director. No, I'm not. I'm the executive editor. I don't know what I am. Hi, this is Dave Hurwitz. I'm the executive editor of ClassicsToday.com, and I'm here to talk to you about classical music ringtones. Oh, God, I love making classical music ringtones. In fact, I've made hundreds and hundreds of the little suckers. Nothing could be easier. And so I think this is probably going to be a multi-part series. And I want to tell you about some of the wonderful, wonderful ringtones you can make that will really make other people who are in the room with you sit up and take notice when your phone goes off. Some of them may actually head for the exits when your phone goes off. It's really amazing what you can do. I find it stunning, absolutely stunning, how few record labels have exploited their catalog for this purpose. It's a source of revenue, actually. You can download these things. They can charge a nominal fee for them. I actually approached a bunch of labels and said, let me do this for you. I can make thousands of these. They promote your performances. They get your name out there. Everyone uses them. You'd think they'd want to do it, but I can't get them to pay any attention. And if I were to do it myself, which I was also considering, there are really big issues with respect to licensing and fees and you know copyright and all the crap I run into when I try and use sound clips on these videos, in fact. So I can't steal the stuff, but you can, of course, use it yourself for your own purposes. And I can recommend some recordings that will allow you to do that. And I just think this is so much fun. My goodness, the bring tone I'm using right now. Well, actually, I have two. I have two because, you know, your iPhone, it lets you have a text tone and a regular ringtone, at least. There may be more things you can do, too, I mean, because you can personalize each ringtone for all the people in, your, in your, your contact list and all that stuff. I've done some of that, too. But, but I do want to show you what the ringtones I'm currently using are. I have a regular text tone. Here is my text tone. I love my text tone especially when I ask classical music people, excuse me, to figure out what it is. Here it is. You ready? That was my text tone. I don't know if you heard that. It's not terribly loud, but it's perfect for a text because it really tells you that it just came in. Let me, let me play it for you again. That is the guillotine from the end of Poulenc's Dialogues of the Carmelites. It's a great text tone. Well, yes, it's a little gruesome if you know what it is, but it really gets the job done. And then my, my usual ringtone at the moment, the one I use for ordinary calls, is the finale of Mendelssohn's Second Piano Quartet, because I just love this tune. It's so catchy, and for reasons I can't quite understand, it seems to penetrate ambient noise very well, and you always hear it when it goes off because it's so arresting. And I also get a lot of looks. I play this and people go, ooh, what's that? Here it is. Let me play it, here you go. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, the thing about ringtones that you need to keep in mind is that you only get about 30 seconds when you make one. Actually, most ringtone makers, I just downloaded some program from the App Store. It was free. Occasionally, it like sticks a stupid ad in that you've got to skip over, just like my videos, <laughs> in fact. But um, you can make you can, you can take any 30 seconds from anything that's on your phone and turn it into a ringtone. Then, of course, getting it onto your phone as a ringtone, well, that's a whole nother procedure. And it's really kind of annoying. I've saved all of my ringtones. I have a file for like a billion of them. I have like a billion of them sitting there. But let me tell you, I'm just going to talk about two different pieces for ringtones in this particular chat. And they're not typical pieces. It's not the average stuff because I don't want ringtones that sound like the same stuff everybody else has. 
I want them to be kind of quirky and different and unusual so that, first of all, I recognize my ringtone when it goes off. And second, so that I annoy all the people who are around me when it goes off. And that's happened. It goes off in meetings. It goes off all the weddings and bar mitzvahs and funerals. If you don't turn your phone off, it's really marvelous the reaction you get when these things go off. Now, one piece that really, really works well. One of the things you notice with ringtones is that some pieces, they give you several options. And I'm only talking about two pieces, but you can get more than half a dozen ringtones out of them. You really can. And, and they're wonderful ringtones. The first is Janicek's Glagolitic Mass. Not perhaps the first piece that comes to mind when you think about ringtones. But Janicek is one of those high screechy trumpet guys. And so high screechy trumpet music is really a good thing when you're doing ringtones. You would think, for example, that the fanfare at the beginning of the Sinfonietta would be very good, but I found that doesn't work terribly well, at least not the beginning of it, because it's a little bit low and a little bit dark, and it's kind of slow. You need something that's perkier. The fourth movement of the Sinfonietta, on the other hand, you know, da 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 pa 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 da 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 bum that works really well. Those things actually serve the purpose perfectly. But here is the opening, the introduction to Yenichik's Glagolitic Mass, 30 seconds of it, roughly. I mean, I trimmed these actually to make them musically a bit more palatable because they're just going to chop off at 30 seconds with your ringtone program. And if it's less than 30 seconds, it doesn't matter because it'll just go and repeat from the beginning. I mean, this is on a telephone. It doesn't have to be aesthetically all that pleasing, but still, uh, for this purpose, I've tried to make the, the cutoffs look just a little neater and tidier. This is on Superfun. This is the uh, Charles McHarris recording, and it's really great. It's actually very good to have a Czech recording of the Glagolitic Mass for ringtone purposes, because they have those very bright, piercing trumpets. You don't want German trumpets. You don't want to have it go... That's not ringtone. You want... So that it cuts through the noise. So anyway, here is your first Yenichek glagolitic mass ringtone. <laughs> isn't it? And it really works. Trust me, I've tried it. All of these have been have been crowd tested. It's difficult also, by the way, to get to get the volume right on ringtones, especially with classical music, because it has such a wide dynamic range. And some things that are extremely loud, you would think would be perfect, but they don't record well as ringtones. You wind up having to to modify them in some way. It's it's good to sometimes amplify them, bring up the bottom level, you know, the basic level, and also to squash the dynamics so that you don't have constant overloading when it comes out of your, your dinky little phone speaker. It can be tricky. It really can be tricky. I'm not going into the technical editing issue of it. I'm sure there are people out there who know this stuff much better than I do. But I do manage to manipulate them in such a way as to get them to sound pretty well on your average, I have an iPhone or whatever, you know, telephone, you know, portable wireless phone thing that you have. So the glycolytic mass is not only great for the beginning, it's also great for the ending twice. The first ending is the insane organ solo before the concluding entrada. I mean, that organ solo will is really makes a great ringtone. It also scares the hell out of everybody on the bus or the subway or in the taxi or wherever else it's going to go off. Believe me, it will turn some heads, but it works really well as a ringtone. Here it is.
And believe me, no one else is going to have this ringtone, at least not within, within a few thousand miles of you. Chances are you will be the only one with that ringtone. Then, of course, there's the insane entrada that concludes the whole thing with the screechy violins and the bright trumpets and the timpani pounding. Another fabulous ringtone, but also one that may turn a few heads because it does sound a little, a little scary when it goes off out of the blue. Here you go. It's just perfect, right? So that's Janicek's glagolitic mass. Three ringtones. You get your money's worth. You also happen to get Janicek's glagolitic mass, which is not such a bad deal. Now, the next ringtone source, and this is a cornucopia of marvelous ringtones, is Martin News Opera Ariane. <laughs> now, here's something I'll bet you don't listen to every day. This happens to be an absolutely gorgeous, very late one-act opera. He wrote it in the 50s for Maria Callas, of all people, who wouldn't even look at it, not surprisingly. And it's been recorded twice. Both of these recordings are on Superfun. This is the earlier one with Václav Neumann conducting. And this is just perfect, perfect, perfect ringtone music. I'm going to play you a bit. It has two orchestral interludes. There's an opening symphonia and then a a prelude or an interlude sort of march like thing later on and they're 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 tracked separately here which is very convenient and they're absolutely wonderful 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 ringtone material i'm going to play the entire opening symphonia because it's like a a minute long well it's actually an a b a i'm playing the a section it's like a minute long and i play you the whole thing you can Cut it up any way you want, but but the opening is so great as a ringtone. I've gotten more requests and people trying to guess what this is and who wrote it than any other ringtone that I've made over the years. Listen to this one. marvelous. The nice thing about it is that glockenspiel at the top on the same tone going ding, 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 you know, as it goes. I mean, you know, it's good to have like a bell, some sort of bright, bright, perky, you know, bell-like sound because we're used to that when our phone goes off, but not the melody underneath. I just love that. My God, it's beautiful. But the other thing is this other interlude. And this other interlude is is a little bit longer and it has, it's all marches and fanfares of different kinds. And it falls into rather, rather convenient chunks so that you can cut it up virtually any way you want. So I'm going to play you the whole thing first, and then I'm going to show you two ways to chop it up, just so you get an idea of what, what happens when you actually make ringtones out of this material. Here is the, the mid-opera interlude. The whole opera is like 40 minutes long. It's just like I said, a little one actor. But here is the interlude.
Now, I'm sure you can tell how much good ringtone material there is in that. And because it goes through distinct phases, like I said, you could mix it up. You could chop off the first four or eight bars or however many it is and start and start a little further into it. That's what I do in this first example so that it begins right away with the trumpet fanfares. It sounds perfect. You'd never know that I'd cut into it anywhere. Listen to 30 seconds of that. And now I took the end of it as well, because you can, you can just start out even later. And here is 30 seconds. Actually, I think it's about 23 seconds to do the whole rest of it from the point where I broke into it. But like I said, it doesn't make any difference. Um, if you don't answer your phone in time, it'll just repeat from the beginning and everybody will be doubly regaled with the wonderfulness of it all. Here you go. So from that, we got three, minimally, three ringtones, and you could do more. Uh, you could really do more. You could play with this in all kinds of different ways. And we've only talked about two pieces. One, Martin News Ariane. And if you get this, you also get Ariane. It's a beautiful, wonderful opera with a big solo Shana at the end, because as you know, Ariadne gets abandoned on the island of Naxos or someplace like that. No, she's been abandoned before that. But she gets abandoned by Theseus and she sings a lament, Ariadne's Lament. And so there is a version of Ariadne's Lament by Martino and it's delicious. Oh my God, what a, I can, I, I'd like to play that whole aria for you. It's absolutely wonderful. It's actually very well sung here too by, by Selena Lindsley. But there's another version out too on Super Fun. I mean, maybe I'll do an Ariane talk at some point. But for the moment, we're talking about ringtones, and I've only dealt with these two pieces. And look at how much stuff we got out of them. It's really, it's really astonishing. And how many, how often are you going to change your ringtones? I mean, you don't. Uh, I've made like four or five hundred of them, but you can, you can actually get by with many less. And these are just two pieces that offer absolutely spec spectacular ringtones. If you have suggestions, feel free. Let me know what your suggestions are too. So this series could go on for a long time. That is, if you're interested and if you're curious, keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me. Take care.